In this guide, we're going to look at dozens of armor sets from all six different cultures, as well as a few bonus sets at the end of the video, like best in class, best for mobility, and best civilian loadout. But before we jump into the video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Flasan 19 for collaborating with me on this video. We both worked extremely hard to put this guide together, and I wanted to make sure he got the recognition he deserves. Flasan has been covering Banner Lord since before I started my channel, looking at each beta patch, reporting bugs, putting together some of the best workshop and caravan guides on YouTube, and so much more. So when he had some personal issues, Issues come up recently, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to bring the community together and show him how much we appreciate all of his hard work. I started a GoFundMe page for $1,500 and will be personally donating $500 to get things off to a great start. Let's all band together and show him how amazing the Bannerlord community can really be. With that out of the way, let's get right into the armor guide. We split it up into three sections, early, middle, and late game armor. Here's the setup. We visited all towns of a specific culture and bought out all available armor, then picked the best pieces for that set. Early game was done at 50 days into the campaign, mid at 200 days, and late at 500. All armor pieces in this guide have been cataloged and are available on the Discord as usual. Starting off with early game Asurai, it's a very good looking set, especially the shoulder piece. We won't go over every individual item stats or this guide would take forever, but at the end of each section, all the stats will be available such as cost, weight, total armor, etc. This set is made up of a helmet with the turban coif, the decorated long sleeve bronze scale pauldrons, a long padded robe, guarded padded van braces, and finally ragged boots. We see a total armor rating of 20 for the head, 20 for the body, 21 for the arms, and 12 for the legs. If you're planning on mounted combat, the Desert Horse is a great buy with 10 charge damage, 52 speed, and 56 maneuver, but only 200 hit points. The light saddle with 20 horse armor is the best at this stage. For the damage testing in the early game, we used the worst possible bow and arrow set and a bow skill of only one. The headshot did 28 damage, while the arm, leg, and body all did 14 damage. I also tested the horse as well, but decided not to collect the data since it's not as important. Needless to say, headshots do more damage than anything, and limb shots do the least. Because I love alphabetical order, Batania is next. It's not a bad looking set, but just a bit bland in my opinion. The pieces that make up this set are the cap with fur coif, an armored bear skin, a woodland garment, which can actually be found on looters, fur rimmed leather gloves, and the folded leather boots. The total armor rating here is 20 for the head, 30 for the body, 12 for the arms, and 15 for the legs. The Patanian pony comes in with 10 charge damage, only 42 speed and 56 maneuver, but boasts 250 hit points. Again, the light saddle will be used for all mounts at this stage of the game. For the damage testing, we see 28 damage for the head, 17 for the arms, 13 for the legs, and 11 for the chest. Even though the chest armor is 10 points higher compared to the Asurai, damage reduced by only 3, which I found interesting. If you're a fan of flavorless food, you'll love the Empire armor set. Nothing flashy, no frills, just a lot of padded quilts that resemble moving blankets. This set is made up of an open mail coif, the legionary padded straps, an infantryman long gambeson, padded mittens, and finally strapped shoes. We see a total armor rating of 20 for the head, 25 for the body, 18 for the arms, and 13 for the legs. For mounted combat, the Midlands Palfrey is an interesting choice, as it has 10 charge damage, 45 speed, and 61 maneuver, but only 200 hit points. Again, nothing fancy here with decent maneuver. The damage stats were similar to the others with 27 for the headshots, 15 for the arm, 13 for the leg, and 12 for the chest. The Kazates have a decent set with one exception. From the neck down, things look great, but the head armor leaves a bit to be desired. This set comprises of a peaked fur hood, leather lamellar shoulder guards, studded leather over Akaton, leather vom braces, and waxed leather riding boots. The total armor rating stands at 13 head, 26 body, 22 arm, and 16 leg. The step horse stats are great for any ranged cavalry, with 8 charge damage, 44 speed, and an incredible 69 maneuver. It has slightly more hit points than the norm at 210. With such a weak helmet, it's no surprise the head damage was quite high at 33. Arm and chest came in at 12 and legs at 13, which is in line with the other tests. No! The Sturgeon set has a similar look to the Empire, but has a bit more flavor on the shoulders and feet. This set was made up of the Spangle Helm with leather, male shoulder guards, light padded armor, padded Von braces, and Huskarl plated boots. The total armor comes in at 20 head, 26 body, 12 arm, and 25 leg armor. The Sturgeon Trotter also comes in at 10 charge damage, 42 speed, 62 maneuver, and 220 hit points. 
It's a bit on the slow side, but has decent maneuver and more hit points than the average. For the damage testing, we see 28 to the head, 16 to the arms, 10 to the legs, and 12 to the chest. With 25 leg armor, it's not a shock to see such low leg damage numbers. And finally, we come to Vlandia, the oddest looking armor set. The chest piece looks great, but everything else looks like something from a BDSM catalog. This set is made up of servilieri over cloth head wrap, ornate pauldrons, leather scale armor, tailor padded van braces, and finally the male cavalier boots. Overall, we have 20 head armor, 24 for the body, 22 for the arms, and 18 for the legs. For mounted combat, we see the highest charge damage for the early game mounts. The Vlandian Hunter starts with 16 charge damage, 48 speed, 65 maneuver, and 215 damage. Overall, this is a solid mount with great stats. The damage numbers are in line with the other sets. 28 damage to the head, 12 to the legs, and 13 to both the arms and the chest. Now for the most important part of each section, the recap. The Asurai armor set comes in at a combined armor rating of 73, the total weight of 10, and a cost of just over 5,000 dinars. The Batanian armor set has more armor at 77, slightly more weight at 11, but also cheaper at 4,000 dinars. Both the Empire and Kazate armor sets offer around 77 armor at a cost of 3,300, but the Kazate is heavier at 9 compared to 6 with the Empire. Looking at the Sturgeon and Vlandians, we see an increase in overall armor up to 84 and 85. Vlandia has the most expensive armor set at 5800 and the heaviest at 12, while Sturgia comes in at 5100 cost and 8.5 weight. Most helmets in the early game offer 20 armor, but the Kazate comes in at an abysmal 13. Batania has the best body armor coverage with 30 in total. Asurai, oddly enough, has the best arm armor and Sturgia has the best leg armor. Asurai has terrible leg armor, barely managing 7. Vlandia has the most expensive armor set at nearly 6,000 dinars. Kazate has the least expensive with just over 3,000. For the best total armor stats, Sturgia is a winner but just barely. If you're not opposed to mixing culture's gear and you're playing Asurai or Kazate, perhaps pick up better leg armor and helmet respectively. Moving on to the mid game, we've allowed 200 days in total to pass from the start of the campaign and once again bought up all the gear from each town. Starting with Asurai, we can see a massive difference in terms of looks. Seoras looks like an actual combatant rather than a squire or a peasant. For the helmet, we have the pointed skull cap over laced coif, shoulders are covered by reinforced scale pauldrons, the body dons the leather strips over padded robe. For the arms, the tailor guarded padded van braces, and finally the legs, the huskarl plated boots. While these are Sturgeon boots, they somehow ended up in an Asurai town, so it's fair game. The overall armor here is 32 for the head, 54 for the body, 25 for the arm, and 24 for the legs at a weight of 15.4. For mounted combat, we move up a tier to the Darshi horse. It boasts 18 charge damage, blazing fast 51 move speed, and 73 maneuver. It's a bit weak at 200 hit points though. To cover our horse, we have the ring mail barding which provides 41 armor in total. For the damage testing, we upgraded our bow skill to 100 and used a mid-tier bow and arrow. The damage stats are similar to the early game testing, so gear and weapons seem to scale together. 40 damage to the head, 13 to the arm and chest, and 19 to the legs. If alien abduction is a serious concern, this tinfoil hat armor set is just for you. We have the steel cap with cheek guards, rough bearskin, ranger mail, scale warlord pauldrons, and scaled boots. This set comes to a total of 32 head armor, 48 body, 37 arm, and 34 leg armor at a weight of 21. The Batanians have both a tier 2 and tier 3 mount, so we go with the tier 3 Glintor Pony, which has 22 charge damage, 45 speed, 66 maneuver, and a staggering 270 hit points. These things are tanks. We weren't able to find the ring mail barding and had to settle for the lamellar half barding for the horse, which only has 38 armor. Damage taken increases slightly here to 41 for the head, 19 for the arms, 16 for the legs, and 15 to the chest. It's actually quite impressive how consistently boring the Empire armor sets look. The shoulders and arm guards are decent at least. Making up this set, we have the round kettle over mail, heavy lamellar pauldrons, cavalry mail shirt, lamellar plate gauntlets, and splint boots. The overall armor here is 34 for the head, 44 body, 42 arm, and 33 for the legs at a weight of 19. For the mount, we see a tier 3 Cantarion Charger with a whopping 26 charge damage, 50 speed, 60 maneuver, and 210 hit points. This is a solid mount for a melee cavalry build. The half-scale barding hails from Batania, but it was the best we could find at 40 horse armor. 
The damage stats were in line, 39 to the head, 17 to the arms, and 16 to both the leg and chest. This Kazate set looks stunning. Everything matches and the bronze embellishments add a nice touch without being too flashy. For this set we have the infantry steel helmet, bronze lamellar shoulder piece, cured leather lamellar armor, plated leather van braces, and reinforced suede boots. The overall armor for this set sits at 33 for the head, 40 body, 36 arm, 32 for the legs, and a weight of 22. Kazate lack a tier 3 mount, so we're stuck with the tier 2 step hunter. At 19 charge damage, 47 speed, 69 maneuver, and 260 hit points, it would make a fine horse archer mount. The damage testing went as expected, taking slightly more damage than the average with 39 to the head, 19 to the arm, 18 to the chest, and 17 to the leg. I don't know about you, but I'm a sucker for chainmail armor sets, and the Sturgeon comes in strong here. This set is made up of the Nasal Helm over Mail, Lamellar Pauldrons, Huskarl Hauberk, Bronze Bracers, and Huskarl Plated Boots. The overall armor sits at 33 for the head, 41 body, 38 arm, and 30 for the legs, at a weight of just over 20. For mounted combat, we have the Tier 3 Revel Chaser, with 20 charge damage, 57 speed, 63 maneuver, and 200 hit points. I was a bit surprised to see the high charge damage and speed paired together for Sturgia, which should make for a solid melee mount. The damage testing results were similar to Kazate, at 40 to the head, 19 arm, 18 leg, and 17 chest damage taken. And finally, we have the Do You Even Lift Bro set with shoulders that make you look like you skipped leg day. The Vlandian armor set consists of the kettle hat over padded cloth, ornate pauldrons with cape, male shirt, heavy male mittens, and strapped male chouses. The overall armor rating sits at 34 for the head, 40 body, 47 armor, and 36 for the legs at a light weight of 16.4. No surprise, the Vlandians have a tier 3 mount, the Valen B Courser. At 30 charge damage, 46 speed, 58 maneuver, and 240 hit points, it's the best melee mount in its class. The damage taken is in line with others at 39 to the head, 17 arm, 16 leg, and 18 chest damage. We start to see a wider gap between the top and bottom tiers here in the recap. The Asari armor set only musters 135 total armor, which should be lower had we not used the superior Sturgeon boots with 18 leg armor. At 31.5 thousand dinars, it's a reasonable price and only weighs 15.4. The Batanian armor comes in strong at 151 total armor and a cost of 38.7k and total weight of 21.3. While it may be boring, the Empire set is always solid with a total armor of 153 and a cost of 39,000. It only weighs 19.1. A pattern is beginning to emerge with Kazate and Asurai having the weakest armor of the bunch. Kazate comes in at 141 total armor, but also a low cost of 24.3 thousand, and a total weight of 22.4. Sturgia has a weak showing with only 142 total armor at a cost of 31.7k and 20.3 weight. And finally, for the Chad armor set, Vlandia comes in at 157 total armor, but also a staggering cost of nearly 50,000 dinars and 16.4 weight. Overall, most helmets were solid at this stage, ranging between 32 and 34. Asurai had the best body armor coverage, Vlandia with the best arm armor, Asurai had the worst arm armor with less than half of what Vlandia had, and Batania and Vlandia tied for the best leg armor at 34. Vlandia was by far the most expensive armor set at nearly 50,000 dinars, but also offered the most armor overall. Kazate had the least expensive set at 24.3. It's time we grow up and put on adult armor. The late game stage was tested at 500 days into the campaign. The Asurai set actually looks pretty good here, with the exception of the arm guards. Some chainmail would have been more appropriate here. Making up this set, we have the noble steel cap, reinforced bronze scale shoulder guards, cavalry lamellar armor, the stinky guarded padded van braces, and the male cavalier boots. The overall armor of this set are 46 for the head, 66 body, 35 arm, and 28 leg armor, all at a weight of 30.7. The horse armor is gorgeous with lamellar plating all over. We see our first tier 5 mount, the Askarat, with 20 charge damage, 65 speed, 73 maneuver, and 220 hit points, it's one of the fastest mounts in the game and makes chasing down enemy cavalry a breeze. Protecting our incredibly expensive mount is the reinforced plate barding with the staggering 68 armor. For the final damage testing, we increase our bow skill to 200 and upgrade the bow and arrows to the top of the line, but still no perks. The damage was recorded as follows, 40 to the head, 25 arm, 23 leg, 
and 14 to the chest. Everything about the Batanian late game armor set is intimidating. Except the helmet. I'm not sure what happened there. The pieces that make up this set are the ridged helmet, heavy warlord pauldrons, highborn male armor, scale warlord bracers, and scaled boots. The armor rating is quite good here. At 46 for the head, 68 for the body, 47 arm, and 48 for the legs, but a hefty 34.3 weight. Batania lacks a tier 5 mount, so we're stuck with the tier 4 Svenrin pony. It has decent stats though, at 23 charge damage, 52 speed, 69 maneuver, and 290 hit points. Again, the Batanian cavalry are quite tanky, but lacking in other areas. The best we could find to protect this mediocre beast was a chainmail horse armor at 55 armor rating. For the damage testing, we do see a reasonable improvement over the Asurai at 41 head damage, 20 arm and leg, and 13 chest damage taken. I actually don't mind this Empire set as much, although the shoulders do seem a bit out of place. Also, shouldn't Elite Cavalry have a full face covering in case of a deflected lance? Maybe that was later in history. I digress. This set consists of a royal cataphract helmet, decorated leather harness over scale, cataphract lamellar armor, lamellar plated gauntlets, and splint boots. The overall armor here is quite good at 51 for the head, 67 body, 49 for the arms, and 46 for the leg armor at a massive weight of 44.3. Fortunately, we do have a tier 5 palmation for the mount, with 28 charge damage, 59 speed, 66 maneuver, and 220 hit points. This mount has solid overall stats and can easily run down enemy foot troops. I know there is a really good empire armor for mounts, but it wasn't present at any town at this stage for us, so the best we could find was the chainmail horse armor with 55 armor rating. As expected, the damage testing came in strong with 37 head damage, 19 arm, 17 leg, and 13 chest damage taken. This was my least favorite Kazate armor set, helmet excluded. I'm a huge fan of the face mask helmets, but the rest look like it should have been mid-tier at best. This armor set consists of the spiked helmet with face mask, bronze lamellar shoulder pieces, bronze lamellar over mail, plated leather van braces, and reinforced suede boots. The armor rating matched the aesthetics for the most part, with 51 head armor, 62 body, 44 arm, and 34 leg armor, at a weight of 32.7. And for some reason, this horse-focused culture caps out at a tier 4 mount. The Karahan has 20 charge damage, 60 speed, 77 maneuver, and 235 hit points. It does have decent speed and is very maneuverable for a tier 4 mount. Once again, the best mount armor we could find was the chainmail horse armor with 55 armor rating. For the damage testing, we see 37 damage to the head, 22 to the arm, 21 leg, and 15 damage taken to the chest. The Sturgeon armor set looks incredible. I'm a huge fan of the goggled helmets, especially with chainmail to cover the neck. This armor set is made up of the Northern Closed Warlord Helmet, Lamellar Pauldrons, Brigandine over Hauberk, Bronze Bracers, and Huskarl Plated Boots. The overall armor ratings are good. 51 for the head, 65 body, 48 arm, and 43 for the legs, but at a hefty weight of 41.5. No surprise, Sturgia is stuck with a tier 4 horse as their top mount. The Amor Trotter has 27 charge damage, 53 speed, 71 maneuver, and 240 hit points. It's a decent all-around mount that doesn't excel in any one category. And of course, Chainmail Horse Armor at 55 was the best we could find. The damage testing went as expected, with 37 head damage taken, 20 to the arm, 17 to the leg, and 14 to the chest. And finally, for the Terminator build, we have the Vlandian late game armor set. The body piece is deceptive as it provides massive armor rating but looks like several layers of padded cloth. This set is comprised of the full helm over male coif, reinforced ornate pauldrons, rough brigandine, heavy male bittens, and strapped male chouses. Look at the armor ratings here though, 50 to the head, 58 body, 55 arm, and 42 for the legs at a weight of only 30.6. And thankfully Tailworlds gave Landia a tier 5 mount. The Destrier is an amazing mount with 32 charge damage, 49 speed, 68 maneuver, and 260 hit points. It won't have any problems dominating mounted melee combat against foot troops. The damage data is some of the best we've seen. 38 to the head, 17 arm, 18 leg, and 16 damage taken to the chest. At long last, the late game recap. Asurai once again has a poor showing with 175 total armor, even while using Vlandian boots. The cost is reasonable at 291,000 dinars, and the weight isn't half bad at 30.7. 
Mitania is the first to crack 200 total armor with 209. The cost is a bit higher at 387,000, and the weight came in at 34.3. The Empire has a staggering 213 total armor, but also has a hefty price tag of 471,000 dinars in total. The weight is also the highest, at 44.3. Kazate comes in below 200 as well, no surprise, with only 191 armor. The cost is very reasonable though, at 290,000 dinars, and a good weight of 32.7. Sturgia has a very strong showing at 207 total armor and a bit cheaper than the Empire, only costing 395,000 dinars. It's heavy though, at 41 and a half. And finally, Vlandia comes in at a solid 205 overall armor and a low price of 330,000 dinars. It's also one of the lighter sets at only 30.6. Okay, here we go. Batania has the best overall body armor rating at 68. Empire has the best arm armor at 59, and no surprise, Asurai has the worst arm armor at 37. Batania has the best leg armor at 48, and again, Asurai, the lowest leg armor at 26. If you're willing to sell your kids, you might actually be able to afford the Empire armor set at 471,000, which is the most expensive of the bunch. Kazate comes in at the cheapest at 290,000 dinars, but also not the worst overall armor, which is interesting. Comparing the equipment that was available at the time of testing, Empire had the best overall at 213, while Asurai by far had the worst at 175. Before we get into the bonus builds, I wanted to point out a couple interesting things. While it's great to look at numbers in a database, the real utility from armor comes from testing damage absorption in a real Calradia setting. If we take the late game armor set and compare the best versus the worst in damage testing, we don't actually see a massive difference in damage taken. Three more damage to the head, six to the arms and legs, and only one from the chest. What this taught me is the bigger numbers aren't quite as impactful as it might seem and we do run into diminishing returns, especially when you consider the price you pay. And a final note, we only tested using bow and arrow damage and to get a full story, more testing is needed to be done using all different types of weapons. Expect a follow up video testing these in the future. For the first bonus build, let's look at the best civilian armor set. All pieces must be tagged with the civilian armor designation in order to be worn in a civilian setting, such as walking around a town and fighting gangs, prison breaks, etc. This set consists of lightweight padded coif, heavy cloak, thick brigadine vest, fian bracers, and reinforced suede boots. The total armor is actually quite high with 14 for the head, 37 body, 22 arm, and 28 leg armor, and only weighs 8.3, including our two-handed sword. For the testing, I decided to show some gang fights. It's difficult to fight while outnumbered, but having really good armor like this can make it much easier to survive. Also, this is on Bannerlord difficulty with player damage at realistic, and most attacks are bouncing off harmlessly. The biggest weakness is taking hits to the head, followed up by thrust attacks with pierce damage. Overall, I was very impressed with the performance of this gear set. I might actually rethink the whole naked combat thing. Overall, this set has 101 armor in total and costs just over 10,000 dinars and weighs 7.1 without the weapon. Not bad at all. For the second bonus section, we wanted to test a great compromise between high armor values and low weight in order to keep our movement speed high. Here's what we came up with. It's not the best looking set, but it does get the job done. We have the goggled cataphract helmet, reinforced ornate pauldrons, leather tabard over mail, scale warlord pauldrons, and the scaled boots. The overall armor ratings are 52 for the head, 50 body, 49 arm, and 40 leg armor, all with a low 20.5 weight. We're comparing this with the heaviest armor set possible, which actually isn't the best in class armor. It weighs a staggering 51 and a half, even without a weapon. For the following test, we give our character 200 athletic skill and then ran the same path in a village to compare the results. It's quite obvious the left side is moving faster, but it's difficult to say exactly how much until we get to the end. We see the mobility armor set completing the run in about 26 seconds, while the heaviest armor completes it in about 28 seconds. It was a bit disappointing to see how small the difference was. While the weight difference was about 250%, the time to complete the run was only 7.5% different. With perks selected to lessen the weight speed hit, this gap will close even further. Either way, this armor set has a respectable 191 armor in total and costs only 223,000, which is better than both Asurai and Kazate late game armor sets. And finally, the bonus everyone's been waiting for, the best in class. 
Only the chattiest of armor pieces need apply here. This set looks terrifying. A literal medieval tank. This set is made up of the Warlord Helmet over Full Mail, Reinforced Ornate Pauldrons over Scale, Mastercrafted Southern Scale over Chain Hauberk. A quick note, this is an unmodified armor piece. Mastercrafted is not a positive modifier, but the actual name of the body armor in the game. Scale Warlord Bracers and Scale Boots. This set has a massive 54 head armor, 73 body, 53 arm, and 51 leg armor, and still weighs less than the heaviest armor set, coming in at just under 40 weight. And since the mounts got no love in the last two bonuses, let's cover the best in class mount and horse armor. The Wadar Hotblood is hands down the best mount in Bannerlord since the 1.0 update. It's a tier 6 mount and requires 95 riding to use, but has 24 charge, 68 speed, 78 maneuver, and 230 hit points. The charge damage isn't the best, but you pair that with a high speed and maneuver and above average hit points, it's the best on the market for sure. And to ensure our steed doesn't fall in battle, we put on the Cataphract Scale Barding Horse Armor, providing 75 armor in total. As I mentioned in my final thoughts section, the armor ratings don't mean quite as much as maybe they should. The damage test shows 35 head damage, 18 arm, 15 leg, and 12 chest. For the low, low price of 846,000 dinars, I was hoping for a bit more protection than that. But if money's no object, then this is a perfect set. Adding up to 231 armor in total, plus 75 for our mount. Let us know if we missed your favorite armor piece in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the GoFundMe page for Flasan19, link is in the description. A huge shout out to the channel members and Patreon supporters who stuck with me through the last month dealing with illness and having sick kids. I appreciate you more than you can know. This set is made up of a serviglie, ser, of a serviglie, serviglie, serviglieri, 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 